for those of you who are new here, uh, Science Gallery Bengaluru is a new institution for public engagement with research and Psyche is our fifth exhibition season. Psyche explores the complexities of the human mind. And today we are opening up an equally complex subject uh, in an event titled Creating a Cultural Conversation on Science. Uh, we have two uh, practitioners uh, with us today. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jyotsna Dhawan. Uh, Jyotsna Dhawan is the CEO of DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance, an organization that funds the best and brightest in the biomedical research ecosystem in the country. Dr. Dhawan is a cell and developmental biologist who has worked on stem cells and tissue repair for the past 30 years. She has led a research group working on muscle stem cells at the C CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad and was involved in the establishment of DBT's Institute for Stem Cell Science and Regenerative Medicine in Bengaluru. Uh, Dr. Dhawan has been actively involved in mentoring young biologists and in a very variety of efforts aimed at building and enabling systems for research and education. She has served as the president of the Indian Society for Cell Biology and the Indian Society for Development Biologists and is a fellow of the Indian National Science Academy. Uh, I'd also like to introduce our other uh, panelists for today, uh, Dr. Janvi Falke. Uh, Dr. Falke was appointed founding director of Science Gallery Bengaluru in November, 2018. Previously, she was faculty at King's College London she started her academic career at the University of Heidelberg, following which she was based at Georgia Tech Lorraine, France, and Imperial College London. She was fellow at the Vision Sharp Collège Zoo Berlin. She was external curator to the Science Museum London and has been scholar in residence at the Deutsches Museum Munich. Janvi is also the author of Atomic State, Big Science in 20th Century India and has co-edited Science of giants, China and India in the 20th century. It's missing from her bio, but she's also a filmmaker and her film is about uh, a cyclotron. So it's a very interesting film. So I'm just putting that in there. Uh, she holds a doctoral degree in the history of science and technology from the Georgia Institute of Technology, Atlanta. So um, after uh, telling you a lot about both our speakers today, I'm just going to briefly tell you a bit about some of the interesting programs coming up this weekend uh, before we get into today's discussion. Uh, do join us uh, for a very interesting workshop called Dogs and Us, Barking Up the Right Tree, an event by our experimenter Snehaja Venkatesh in conversation with Anandita Bhadra, Renzi Philip, and Rex Joseph on 7th May at 10.30. So this is an interesting program that looks at cognition in animals. And also do join us for a film discussion uh, around the film Claire X Bosco by Mutiganda Nukunda in Jonge Karangwa and Alice Bullard on 8th May at 6.30 p.m. IST. Uh, please do come for the program because the exhibition is wrapping up soon and this will be the last few weekends where we'll be having a wide diversity of programs happening. I'd also like to remind the audience that there will be an interactive Q&A session at the end of the discussion so you can add your questions into the Q&A box and I believe Janvi and Jyotsna will both be happy to answer them at the end. Uh, please also do fill out the feedback form, which is the link will be available in the chat box. So you can let us know what you think of this program, as well as what we could do better going forward. Uh, now I'd like to sort of come to the question of the moment. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Tanvi and Jotsna, late at night today. But it's a great time to talk about some of the really interesting work both of your institutions are doing. Uh, Jotsna, if I might invite you to begin by telling us a bit more about the DBT Welcome Press India Alliance and uh, some of the work that your institution is doing. Sure. Thank you so much uh, for having me on this program. Uh, I've been a great admirer of the Science Gallery and it's really a thrill to be here chatting with Janavi and with all of you. Uh, so I uh, have been uh, an academic uh, most of my life and only recently joined the, the DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance uh, a few months ago uh, to participate in what is uh, one of the most exciting funding programs uh, that I've seen. Uh, so the DBT Welcome Trust India Alliance, as the name suggests, is a co-funded organization that was started about a dozen years ago by uh, a very visionary partnership 
uh, propelled by uh, Professor M. K. Bhan, who was then secretary of the DBT, and uh, Professor Vijay Raghavan, uh, who subsequently became uh, secretary DBT, but was then the director of the NCBS, uh, in a partnership uh, through a variety of conversations with the Wellcome Trust, Sir Mark Wolpert at the time was the director. And this led to this really innovative, uh, wonderful program being started. Uh, I think, uh, you know, there are not many organizations like this where you have uh, a large uh, uh, biomedical research charity like the Wellcome Trust partnering with a government of India organization uh, to essentially uh, promote uh, research in biomedical science, not just by handing out money, but by actually creating an ecosystem where uh, people who are uh, all over the world can come and participate in research in India. Uh, the idea was to really be able to strengthen how we do uh, biomedical research in India. And for the first uh, uh, eight or 10 years of its existence, uh, where we had, uh, uh, you know, the founding CEO, Professor Anuradha Lohia, and then Professor Shahid Jamil, who is very well known uh, as uh, particularly in these past two years of the pandemic uh, with his uh, extraordinary articles on COVID and uh, the uh, outlying issues there. Uh, so, you know, they led this organization uh, to, to start funding people, not only within uh, India, but also to bring back people who were interested in moving back to India, but had uh, uh, you know, either hesitations or difficulties about the kinds of uh, programs they would be able to lead uh, doing very sophisticated high-end science. Now, subsequently, the organization has also, rather than just funding um, the biomedical research at a discovery level, it's also been funding clinical and public health uh, research. And these are large grants that are awarded to uh, either as team science collaborative proposals or as uh, clinical centers where centers uh, that are already doing clinical research uh, propose large projects, which include capacity building and uh, frontier areas of uh, clinical research. But in addition to that, one of the very early uh, sort of uh, emphasis at the India Alliance was public engagement. And that is something that has been uh, a very strong component of the India Alliance's focus and where it spends a lot of time uh, um, in engaging uh, people, not just within the, the realm of scientists and clinicians, but the public at large. And this it does through multiple ways, uh, through its fellows whose own research is frontier and can be communicated to the public at large uh, in simple ways so that people understand the excitement of what's going on in science uh, in India. Uh, the other is to also develop ways of communicating science through helping in building science journalism courses, in uh, engaging school children, colleges, et cetera, by various outreach programs uh, in a very diverse set of locations and institutions. So that's one of the really interesting things. And uh, the way in which the India Alliance does this is through a very dedicated team of uh, grants uh, advisors and managers within the uh, organization, as well as a science communication and public engagement team, very ably supported by a small and extremely dedicated uh, administrative and financial and management staff. And so we're a small organization, but I think you could say we've had a, a, a quite a large impact. Uh, funding over 500 uh, institutes uh, and grants ar around the country uh, and uh, with these past dozen years. So uh, that's a little bit about the, the India Alliance and I'm very happy to answer more specific questions at the end. Uh, thank you so much, Dhrutnada. I think that was a, a really holistic overview of what India Alliance has been doing in the, you know, the past few years, like you said, and uh, especially the bit you, which you spoke about public engagement, right? And I think 
Science Gallery as the new kid on the block now. I think we're really keen to uh, expand upon this. And now, you know, I'd like to invite John B to share a bit more about uh, what Science Gallery is up to and um, how you see us connecting into this uh, environment. Thanks, thanks, Madhu. For once, I'm, I'm delighted to be on the other side where, where I'm, I am not the one having to ask questions, but having to answer um, about things I actually know a little bit about. So <laughs> it's, it's great to be here. So, so yes, thanks Madhu. And, and thanks Joseph for that fabulous introduction to the uh, work at the India Alliance. So Science Gallery Bengaluru for, you know, those of um, you know, those of our audience who are joining in and haven't heard much about us, we are a public institution for research-based engagement. And so in a sense where we, where, you know, in a, we belong in the ecosystem is such that we work very closely with research institutions, but we also work just as closely with cultural institutions in order to bridge that divide that exists. And, you know, that sort of really uh, unfortunate and, you know, tragic, almost tragic gap that exists between research and the public, right? And I think even science communication is a, is a, relatively um, professionally, I mean, the professionalism in science communication is a relatively new thing in a sense. And many institutions are, of course, now most em, uh, eminent institutions today in India do have some element of uh, science communication where, where they hope to take their research um, to the public. But where, in a sense, we want to move one step ahead of, our, uh, of that, and that is where I think we, um, we will build up, as Madhu very rightly said, on the work that India Alliance has begun, uh, is that it's not about communicating the research to the public, but helping the public find the relevance of research to their lives, right? And taking that responsibility of building that relationship. And that can be done, you know, in, in, in different ways, right? Like the, and, and, and the way that we have chosen for ourselves um, and you know our sibling galleries, we, you know we are a, we are a, we are a sort of bunch of eight. Um, the the way uh, we do it is to say that you know not everyone has to be a cell biologist or not everyone has to understand cell biology. I mean, you know, no, uh, uh, or nor does everyone have to be a historian of science, right? Uh, but it is important for as many of us to recognize the importance of these disciplines and the research and the knowledge they produce for our day-to-day -day lives, right? So you don't need to understand quantum mechanics or be afraid of it, but what you might want insight into from people who know is why that matters to your life. And I think that is the task of, of suggesting, enabling, bringing the tools in for that work of interpretation. Right, and that's the task we take on. And I think, uh, you know, as 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 you know, Josna, you indicated, and Madhu also uh, said, this is this is relatively nascent in India, right? I mean, we 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 don't have an infrastructure, we don't have the avenues, we don't have the resources, we don't have the institutions yet that can allow for that to happen. In addition to the fact that, you know, uh, as my team hears me say ad nauseum, a higher education is so, uh, siloed. Right, like at, between the ages of 15 and 17, we separate people from minds other than those that are related to or in the same profession. So there is little chance for a young engineer to understand how a historian's mind works, or for that matter, know that a historian's mind is also interesting at that, and that, you know, or an artist's mind is just as interesting, and that they have different insights and perspectives on this world. And but this separation has consequences, I think, on both sides, because it leads in many ways to our inability to, to relate to what's happening around us, because we don't relate to people around us, as a result of which most of us in the human, social, natural sciences, and art are deeply engaged in agendas that are set elsewhere, answering questions that are set elsewhere, and very seldom do we find you know, the, the initiative and the opportunity and the funding to do something which addresses questions that arise you know, around us. It's, so so it, it's consequences not only for knowledge production, but also for art, also for you know, other things. And therefore, as a result of it, what society we build right in the long run. So I think that, that that is those are the reasons why you know I feel the project 
we are doing and the kinds of you know kind of public engagement that that india alliance wants to fund is critical to do better science better art but also build better society in a sense right so that's that's kind of you know i mean i know it sounds a little kind of mushy and it sounds a little sort of you know very <laughs> <not at all. laughs> but i but i do believe that you know this is actually quite important and quite critical and and you know we are in it yeah. i must agree with you janavi there because i think that it's uh, there's there's an even wider dimension and that is that knowledge itself should not be the purview of the few yeah there is an issue of privilege and there is an issue of understanding that wonder and curiosity are the privilege of everybody yes and anybody and the person who wishes to make an inquiry into something a question who wonders about anything who's curious about anything the world around them people around them uh there should be avenues for them to be able to explore that and not everybody is going to take the scholarly approach which requires a particular uh disciplinary uh understanding and an understanding of uh, a particular history or trajectory of a particular field many people are going to approach it from first principles and knowing nothing about it but also inhibited about asking those questions yeah. and so i think it's very important that as a society we understand that curiosity and wonder are things to be cherished and things to be inculcated and things to be uh, you know uh, admired and that those are the things that lead us to do things uh, differently or to just to investigate the world around us and that for that reason uh, we must have much broader conversations you know it's not just about disciplines or about particular qualifications yeah. we need to have much broader conversations and and uh, uh, an organization such as yours which is really open to the public at all levels uh, yeah. is something that can uh, really foster that uh, you know and so i think that you know what you say is completely true it's it's it you know silos need to be broken at multiple levels yeah yeah no i i i agree with i mean you know of course you know this is this is uh, an agreement fest <laughs> Uh, I, I, I resonate hugely with what you say, and and you know, um, one of the things that you know, and, and I'm I'm fairly certain we will be agreed on on this as well, um, is that you know, breaking silos doesn't mean giving up on rigors of discipline. No, or not at all. Method. In fact, it means strengthening them, but bringing them to questions that your discipline might not be asking. right and and that might not sort of address the moment or might not address you know something that's happening around you and so the training is important the rigor is important but it needn't come from you know the 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 needn't come from the area or, or the discipline that lays claim on that object of inquiry right exactly as you said people can begin from first principles come from anywhere and it doesn't really matter because if you know we i mean the the there's such a sort of huge flux that we are living in right now right like i mean the, the key problems happen to be climate change pandemics um new medical technologies um mental health state, sorry mental yes. health <laughs> mental health exactly mental yeah. health um surveillance or you know uh, uh, data deluge questions of this kind right like it, it, in when we are when we you know when we need to find are ways to address this i mean you know it, it, we we will have to step out of questions that sort of you know narrow down in a sense the the need for that inquiry to to step back and say okay if we need to reimagine and this is you know this is one of the founding sort of ideas behind our natural sciences lab um, in the public lab complex at science gallery bengaluru which is to say that if we need to reimagine our relationship to nature at this moment in time then what are the new questions of nature we should be asking in order to make that kind that new kind of knowledge and a new relationship possible and for that we will have to step back from the siloed laboratories back into something that you know resonates with but is not identical to the mid 19th century natural history natural sciences laboratory where you know 
it yes. is as you said it is the wonder it is the you know the fascinating universe around us and then okay so what do we want to know now because we want to protect it right and so yes. it, i mean you know it, it's it's so so the, the the training in fact will will probably bring you know bring us to a better place if we don't let it lead us by the nose and instead you know we kind of take it for a walk instead um is yeah it, 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 sorry enough said <laughs> no i think that was a great way to sort of set the broader context in which both these institutions are working but i'd also like to sort of bring uh, to the forefront uh, a couple of so science gallery and india alliance have worked together now for two exhibition seasons we've worked on contagion we've worked on psyche and uh, what has been really interesting especially during contagion which happened during the peak of the pandemic uh, what we realized and we had a lovely panel with a bunch of scholars from india alliance where they spoke about the on ground response to covid and one of the things that came out is there's this sort of lack of trust between society and sort of research right and this is a uh, when we talk about this curiosity and we also come to this sort of parallel aspect of do the does the public trust research does the public trust science and what uh, and what role do institutions like yours play in this uh, dynamic uh, between research and the public and how might you be influencing it well i mean that's a that's a very important question uh, you know as a as a funding agency uh, we cannot directly influence that what we can do because you know as a funding agency we have to rely on the ability of experts to uh, curate and stringently select those proposals which are uh, the the most robust the most well written the the you know the most significant and uh, so these are in the hands of experts and so the fellows or grantees who are selected then have i think a major role to play in what you're talking about because what they do is not just uh you know scuttle off to their labs and uh, look at molecules or cells or uh, animals or ecosystems or uh, people but they must also uh, communicate what they do uh, well and in an understandable fashion to the public and they must be transparent they that is i think one of the key things and you know in many ways that's built into academic Uh, or at least into scientific inquiry uh, ideally mm -hmm. uh, do we always uh, maintain those ideals perhaps not but uh, at an ideal level uh, this inquiry has to be transparent in that a scientist must always be willing to say we've gone so far but there's still something we don't understand or there's something that doesn't fit right and it may be an uncomfortable thing because sometimes you have been pursuing an idea uh that appears to fit so well with all of the data that's coming in and yet there are things that are ununderstandable or inexplicable which require more inquiry right now that can seem like a never ending process for somebody outside the system who would like to see more definite and more uh, immediate answers or returns on the kind of uh uh investment and investigation and effort that has gone into a particular project but i think it's very important that the public also understands the open ended nature of some questions now is it the case that all questions are open ended it depends on how the question is framed right and what was the method that was used to actually achieve uh an understanding and how does one go about communicating that so i think all of these are you know they are uh, they contain imponderables but also the path that one has to take or be willing to take in order to communicate well uh, the the complexities of what one does as a scientist johnny your thoughts um 
so you know i mean there is where we sort of slightly differ you know in, in, in that in in our starting points right at this point, because we, our starting point right now is public engagement since um since october 2019 um the public lab complex at the science gallery is not yet open but you know if nothing goes wrong as i like to say between now and november uh, our building will open and the lab complex will come into being right so uh, for those of you who are not aware, we will have six kinds of experimental spaces there. Uh, one is a what we call a natural sciences lab based on the foundation, sort of founding principle that I mentioned. Uh, similarly, we have a materials lab, which will have a workshop area, but also like an inner sort of slightly more delicate uh, area, um, which is all about understanding and thinking about materials for the future. And so of course, ideas like sustainability also come in. Um, then we have a new media lab because you know what can we do these days without digital, without the digital world and, and computers, but also a space to do uh, to think about uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, among other things, and you know ex as expressed as expressed creatively and creatively both in terms of knowledge formation but also art. Uh, for that's true for all labs. Uh, we have a food lab. Uh, which, you know, most critical part probably of life and living. Um, and then we have a, uh, a theory lab, which is for groups to sort of, you know, come together and uh, create works in progress from, you know, sort of unlikely combinations of people. So groups of people, anything between probably three to seven or three to 10 people who come and do work uh, together. Uh, and we have a black box, which is, you know, under regular circumstances, a performance space, fully performance space, but uh, rigged for um, all well, all possible kinds of sound, light, data, and lasers. So if you want, you can study kinetics there, but if you want, you can create deep space and immersive experiences in augmented reality, virtual reality uh, kind of um, you know, experiences. Um, and, um, you, and, and we have accompanying uh, experimental spaces like, uh, I mean, sorry, spaces that accompany experimental spaces like dark, like a dark room, a microscopy room, a tissue culture room, um, you know, things like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and some, and some initiatives run across the labs. So we are, you know, working on a, on a digital initiative, you know, where, um, which, which will run through, um, in the form of, for example, a public lab notebook, an idea that Madhu developed. Um, and, uh, you know, we will also have, uh, as we're recently developing a numeracy initiative, which again will work across the laboratories. Because all of these things in a way have to come together in interesting and approachable ways uh, in order for, you know, meaningful public engagement to happen. So we're, we're trying to put together sort of, you know, uh, of, um, yeah, an interesting set of experimental spaces and they'll run on a fellowship model, right? And, and uh, I, I think you'd be probably happy to hear, uh, um, uh, your predecessor Shahid is aware of it. Uh, the India Alliance uh, fellowships model is, uh, was inspiring for us. So in fact, we literally sort of took your, your um, you know, the understanding of how you fund. Yes as the sort of process and procedure for how we will do in including also sort of, you know, numbers so that it, because it is one of the most respectable um, and exciting, um, you know, funding opportunities outside of the state system that's, that's uh, accessible to, um, uh, you know, uh, scientists today. I'm so we delighted we, to hear that because it really is a very innovative and well put together is. system and it's taken a lot of curation and it's entirely up to my predecessors who've done this, uh, you know, over iterative uh, uh, sort of uh, 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 ways of uh, yeah. making sure that it works and is responsive and uh, so I'm delighted to hear that and I'm sure the entire team and anyone who's ever worked for the India Alliance will be happy to hear that. Oh, that's uh, it's fabulous, and and you know, I mean, and I and we hope to learn from your iterations, and we hope to be able to, you know, in a few years also, you know, bring our learnings to the table as well, because you know, this is we're in it together, as I like to say it, right? So, can I volunteer to come make coffee at the at at your experiment? <laughs> I think I think I could, I could have a whole lot of fun, uh, you know, uh, uh, learning about immersive experiences in digital <laughs> media. Tissue culture, I know, but the other stuff is completely new to me, and I would just be delighted. So, you know, <laughs> you know, this is. I mean, I'm you know, a 63-year-old intern. I'm there. 
<laughs> you know, so so the thing is, we are all we are all interning at a space we all wanted, right? Like, so the team and I have developed a space which we wish we had access to growing up. And uh, so, so you know, so so the fellowship model, we'll run it on a fellowship model. We are we will offer the fellowships for a year, minimum of a year, because often what happens is when you bring people from the human, natural, social sciences and art, including the engineering sciences, together. Uh, often the the opportunities are sort of ephemeral, right? Like three months, six months, hang out in some lab, do some illustrative work, because that's all you have time for. You do not have the time for actual exchanges, setting up of new, because, you know, I mean, as someone who's, who's actually a practitioner, you will appreciate hugely how difficult it is to, one, arrive at a question, two, design an experiment, three, run it credibly, four, verify it, and then say something meaningful from it, right? Even a year is not enough. But we yeah. thought at least, you know, so, so, so we thought at least a year, if we do a year, then, you know, if, if someone arrives at a question, then the question can be taken elsewhere to where it belongs, right? Like that, that little germin, germinated thing can go, you know, if it has to go to a university lab, it can go to a university lab, to an industrial lab, if that's more relevant, to an incubator, if that's the relevant, to an art gallery, if that's where it's relevant spaces. So right? do you have people set up who would be uh, sort of ready to take on these questions? Because that's going to be the critical link, right? Because many people might hesitate to take on something that has been originated somewhere else. And, uh, you know, because everybody's got big egos, right? I mean, so... <laughs> People need, to, people need to kind of buy in right from the beginning uh, and be be really happy uh, to participate in in sort of transforming the the little question that was asked into something that is uh, you know doable and yeah right now we we'll, we run on love faith and good energy so you know uh, uh, hope springs alive we think of any of the other cliches that come to your mind and right now we we yeah. But I mean, but but they also come from how we have uh, the kind of responses we've had from yes. people, right? Like so, so, um, so let's so, you know when someone submits a proposal, we would like to abstract them from their context in a sense, like we don't want to look at the degrees, the whatever. But the, but the merit of the proposal have very good people from across disciplines examine those, and then the process, etc. Right? Which of course you're more familiar with at this moment than I am because you guys have run it and we we haven't yet run it, but we will very soon. Your, your system is going to be very much more complex because I think, you know, the India Alliance has, a, uh, even though it's a wide range of subjects, it's all within the biomedical and clinical yes. and public health sphere, whereas yeah. yours is moving across disciplines and yes. in, uh, in, in very innovative ways. And so I think it's going to be uh, quite a challenge, but I yes. think a very interesting and exciting one. I, I think I agree with you. It is going to be a challenge and I hope it's a fun challenge in that sense, right? And, and there will be hits I and misses. I believe it will be, yeah. It, you know, it'll, it'll grow. But the other thing we are, you know, putting, so so we are, we are saying that no, we would love for fellows to come and spend at least a year um, and that they work across labs, talk to people. So we'll have a cohort every year uh, of about 30 to 35 fellows across the labs. So each of the labs can take about 17, 17 to 20 people, right? Like not more than that. Um, so what we're saying is that the fellow should also take an apprentice hmm. so that they have an assistant to do, you know, a range of things, but also in effect, you're socializing 35 young people over a yeah. year and more to think across disciplines, because the, otherwise we, you know, we will do something, something interesting might come, it might be displayed, it might be taken elsewhere, but the next generation knows nothing of it, right? Like they, they have, the gates still remain closed. No, no, but that's very, very critical, actually. That is yes. key. Yeah. Yes. And, and we, we will also pay the apprentices nothing close to the fellowship, but, you know, um, but reasonable such that, you know, what we are attentive to is that no one should feel like they can't access the opportunity because there are out of pocket expenses. So that's what we may need to ensure. And we, we are hoping to be able to do that. And we are working on it now. And, you know, so far, um, um, the responses have been good. The, you know, the agencies that we've approached. So can I ask, yes. uh, is there a, a, what, what's your model for publicizing this? And who are you going to, who's, who can apply? You know, um, anyone can apply anyone. anywhere. So, so how are you going to make sure that it reaches anyone? 
yeah so uh, this is you know this question is just as critical for how do we ensure or how, what are we doing to ensure that our public engagement programs reach reaches everyone and anyone right yes. so um, everything from social media to putting flyers in newspapers to putting advertisements in in um, uh, magazines and journals and newspapers and uh, oh i already said newspapers radio mm -hmm. so everything right and yes. and i mean as we all know it will take a few years before this this becomes even real right it will yes because you know this is something we learned during our public engagement program which we luckily began almost 3 years before the building is opening now um which is that you know people who when they hear the word exhibition they don't expect the cluster of programming they do people who come because they heard about a lecture don't expect a tutorial people who come for the master classes and workshops don't expect a film festival people who come for the film festival don't expect a discussion with a scholar so in a sense that that we offer so I many including of course the resources right like our research we also make our own research available to you know anyone who wants so practically yes. what we are creating in the archive of the exhibition is open courseware and yes. so going forward we want to actually in fact package it that way so that you know anyone anywhere can pick it up and at this moment you know uh, in english and in kannada uh, uh, partially in kannada mostly in english and run it anywhere you know so it's just the exhibits which are sort of you know copyright pr productions of the artist yes. and the films which are copyright productions of the filmmaker because they live off it uh, go back to them but the rest of it all stay and they are very good resources that's, right that's but coming, yeah yeah so, so so coming back to the question you asked me how do we so, so you know so, so slowly now you know uh, our audiences are realizing oh they they do this too they do this too they also have open access games to play they also have playlists on spotify they also have this they also so i think it's it it will grow i mean like any institution particularly one that doesn't find uh, a twin mm -hmm. um or even a sibling right now is going to take you know a lot of effort and of, and you know and we, we are doing our best in the sense we, you know we work with the indian national science academy we've also worked with the indian academy of science we um, you know work with you we uh, work with cultural institutions like museums we work with universities so just getting the word out schools are you working so with schools yet or yes. with with sort of more grassroots level uh, education systems where people really don't have even they don't even know that something yeah. like the science gallery in bangalore exists yes right? yes yeah. no no you 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 you're totally right and i think that's the that's the thing i mean you know we produce the content in kannada but who's even you know who's are we making it aware yeah, exactly yeah. yeah so um uh you know for that what we do is you know the pandemic in a sense put to rest many you know beautifully laid plans but we we are going to have programs at metro stations Mm -hmm. we have to revive that arrangement um, mm -hmm. and to, to create that kind of awareness we of course work with high school and upwards right like our target age group yes. is adults um, that's, so, that's fine yeah, yeah. so we, we so the metro stations are one we also work with institutions that are already working in government schools and colleges um, i think that is critical exactly you know, sort of more grassroots level yeah. uh, initiatives where there are people who have come together and are already working with government schools yeah. in particular you know promoting public understanding of science yeah. uh, there are you know there are tiny little organizations which yes. actually have good impact because yes. they've adopted particular schools they have a very local knowledge and understanding of what's needed uh, and how kids you know in in high school get enthused or turned yes. off of yes. science yes. and you know uh which is uh, i think very critical yeah 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 no no you you're absolutely right and i think we'll need to do that work slowly we'll need to build a wing so that the open courseware is a part of that uh, you know effort such that we make it ready we partner with educational societies for example who often tend to have clusters of institutions uh, in right. tier 2 tier 3 cities 
yeah you know, through that and then that is the gateway to come to sort of you know the more contemporary program which is either physical or you know partially digital or you know something that or, or outreach them. sessions if you can build them you know yes. at some point first first digitally and then particular and perhaps physically absolutely. absolutely i mean have you thought about having something like a, a registry where people can uh, you know different little organizations can come register with you and just say we exist let us know when you have a program that that you know that we can uh, uh, help popularize or uh, participate in we don't and we will now <laughs> because you know th those are the kinds of things that people are just looking uh, there are so many small uh, efforts everywhere yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, maybe 40 people or 50 people yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or 100 people, you know, may participate in any individual program, but that adds up, you know. It, it does add up. So and, and I have to tell you something very interesting. I recently read a biography of Gregor Mendel, yeah. uh, the, the father of genetics. And, you know, so much has been written about more recent uh, developments in uh, genetics and genomics and cell biology and, you know, all of the developmental biology, et cetera. So we know many of these names much better. You know, people, people know about Watson and Crick much more than they know about Mendel. Mm -hmm. Mendel is a name, but we don't really know very much about him and his life. Darwin, we know more about right mm -hmm. so this this biography was very interesting because one of the things that it told me was that when mendel presented the results of his experiments with peas mm -hmm. and in the crosses that he did where he actually deduced the the the, the two fundamental laws of genetics of, of inheritance yeah it was a, a, a sort of wintry night uh, at some little society in this tiny little town where he was the abbot uh, you know, uh, a monk, uh, yeah. and you know, it was a respected position, but he went down there and he gave this little paper and there were less than 40 people there. And it went unnoticed for decades, essentially, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm, what I mean is that, you know, you can have such incredible fundamental discoveries yeah. Which can which can drop to the bottom of a, a, of the pond yeah. simply because there was not the ability at the time, uh, you know, or the uh, emphasis or the the you know the environment to make it flower. Yep. And uh, you know, this is at a very different level. I'm not necessarily saying that you know the people whom you're going to be engaging with are all going to you know make fundamental discoveries, but they might. They might exactly. And they might. They might. And the possibility, that universe of possibilities has to be held out as, you know, something that is important. No, absolutely. I mean, I think, and that's fundamental to sort of, you know, believing that, you know, at the end of the day, both knowledge and its production uh, are, is something that people should have a say in, should be able to participate in and should be able to contribute to. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up the Mendel story because both Madhu and I have a, have a lovely graphic novel of, of Mendel, uh, which was a gift for us from, uh, you know, from, a, from, a, from some conference in Prague, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, my, my sort of, you know, uh, inspiring story for, uh, sorry, the story that inspires me a lot is not even, you know, uh, of, a story, of, of something that went, went unnoticed, or in, in fact, of something that was noticed right from the start, which is that of C.V. Raman. You know, for the first 10 years of his career, he was an accountant by day and a, and a physicist by evening. You know, where is that space today? Can you be an accountant by day and a physicist by evening and make a Nobel Prize worthy discovery? You know, who has the room to be able to, you know, to uh, and the opportunity to be taken seriously in that manner, right? And even absolutely after he right. got to the university right. show, yeah. he, he continued to work in the same lab. I mean, he's a bureaucrat, you know, a bureaucrat. I mean, yeah. So I think, you know, I mean, that's something that, you know, you touched upon, which I think is very important. There are lots and lots of homegrown examples that we don't give sufficient, you know, uh, of course, they're famous and they've been iconically placed in various, you know, pantheons, but we don't absorb the sort of really important lessons, Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, the fact that uh, he, he was doing things that were entirely of his own interest and make yes and so it takes so you know so a person you know can look at a story like that and say 
oh my gosh, I would need to be of the towering personality of yes. a Raman to be able to do that. Yes. And I am no, I'm not that. So yeah. I will never do that. But yeah. to, to, to sort of decodify Raman and make him as human as everybody else, okay, yes. is an important thing. And it is something that we need to sort of spend some time focusing on. Absolutely. No, I, I completely agree. You know, the, the, yeah. you know sort of, I, I would love for us to be able to see Raman as, a, as an accountant. Yes. You know, um, just like Einstein, for example, worked in a patent office and, you know, Raman as a quarrelsome creature, you know, we all of all of those complexities of being just, you know, human beings, right? Like, it, like I completely agree with you. And I, I think the more we kind of uh, do this work, right? And that's also why, of course, you know, uh, my discipline, my, my, my sort of parent discipline, history of science is so critical, right? Like to have a perspective on what the yes. path means. And what, what is that insight to learn from there, right? Not, not the, the insight to take is not one of, oh my God, like, you know, um, Nobel Prize, extremely intelligent person. Of course, all of that too, but accountant. Yes. So also, you know, something that I was, uh, I was in conversation last week with Ron Vale, uh, uh, who's uh, executive director of the Janelia Farm, uh, you know, research uh, yeah. um, campus, uh, HHMI. And uh, Ron has spent a lot of time engaging with Indian science, with young investigators in India, and has built, you know, a, a wonderful network of, of support for uh, Indian science. And one of the things that he pointed out was, you know, it's not just about being smart and about, you know, uh, focusing on a particular question. It's tenacity. Yes. Determination and tenacity and uh, real interest in getting to the bottom of something. Yep. Right. And that takes, as you say, maybe a quarrelsome personality, but so be it. So be it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, grit, right? Like I, I think well, I think it was James Baldwin, I think who I mean, I, I was reading recently something by him and where he says, you know, I've seen sort of many a talent lay to waste um simply because basically, you know, in order to reach where you have to, like you said, it's tenacity that that so talent's not enough, uh, but it's yes. tenacity that's required. But the other thing also being, and you know, uh, both you and I appreciate that that yes. sort of you know, with in all humility, but also with all all of its tragedy, the opportunity. Yes. Right? How do you make things accessible? How do you how do you you know? The, Raman found the Indian Association for Cultivation of Science, right? Like, and and you know, wh wh where is that space today? If you don't, if you don't get into an Indian Institute of Science or an NCBS or a you know etc where do you go you know yes. what do you do like i mean it's, it's it, how early and how soon and how tragically have we closed doors on so many people and their desires to be able to pursue something i mean it, it's yes. and it's that's shocking. why i think you know hands-on places like yours where the public can you know quite uh, in addition to the fellowships where people you know have to go through a process and immerse and then come up with something where a place where the public can can see and wonder and see themselves being yes. able to walk that path. Yeah. I think that that imagination is very important. Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 again, completely agree with you. And and you know that path is not one of pedagogy or didactics, right? Like it's no. not about come here learn about gravity or come here find out more about carbon. No, that's not what it is. It's come here build a relationship, find out why carbon might matter to you. You might leave this time thinking carbon doesn't matter to me next time you might come back and you know there might be an exhibition on the gene and you know that might matter to you right so it's, yeah. it's leaving that door open and opening as many doors and windows as possible to you know to to let people find their way to way to something that you know they understand because i mean you know again and this is something you know my team and i always say which is that there is no such thing as the unknowing visitor right everyone knows something yes they might not know exactly what you're asking them, but they know something. And, and, you know, how do you allow them to feel the dignity of what they know and therefore give them the confidence of finding out about something they don't know, right? And it's a very difficult sort of thing to do in public education. Another term that, you know, we have come to slowly appreciate over, I think it's, it's not even, well, six months, eight months that we've been sort of um, asking ourselves about what we feel and how we understand this term called public education, which was in fact an educationist who suggested it to us. So you guys are doing public education. And, uh, you know, so we are now coming to terms with, with that idea, but it, it's a, it's a, yes, 
it's a tight rope i mean you know and especially in our context right like where it's it's so clearly established i mean you get your 93% and you go into science and you know and everybody else you know doesn't matter so, you know so what about efforts in citizen science you know where uh, there are a few uh, very interesting ones already in the country yeah. uh, many of them and you know those are the kinds of things where anybody uh, who has an interest or has been you know tapped yeah. by some larger network yeah. uh, realizes that even small observations can contribute yeah. to larger questions right yeah. and those those questions uh, may initially be set by somebody who's already in the field yes. right i mean so i think of for example the 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 bird counting yes. you know the the backyard bird count the indian bird count etc yeah. which are yeah. you know they're wonderful efforts because they involve you know simply looking out your window making documentation and feeling mm -hmm. invested in knowing whether you had three house sparrows yesterday versus you know 10 pigeons today versus you know yeah. especially in urban spaces where there's <laughs> likely to be very little diversity but then suddenly realizing that there is right and so uh, you know i think citizen science efforts are also really something which are uh, uh, to me very heartening because yeah. you know they're not going to necessarily probe you know the nature of uh, you know detailed materials or uh, yeah. things like that but they but they could you know who knows yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we're completely open to that. We have a, we have a, so you, so you know, the, our, our sort of buckets, so to speak, are three. One is the public engagement bucket. The second one is the public lab complex budget, uh, budget bucket. Of course, there's a budget too. <laughs> there's uh, the budget as well, the all important budget. <laughs> the all important budget. will dog you and keep you awake at night. <laughs> Absolutely. And the third bucket is what we call community initiatives. And I think there we are we are more open to initiatives coming from also groups of citizens, younger mm -hmm. citizens uh, uh, as well, but also from others who want to involve citizens and you know well young people in larger projects. So we're totally open to to this. So what we like to say is that in public engagement, our fingerprints are the strongest because we shape it. In the public lab complex, we shape it to an extent because we are involved in the selection, but the agenda is still set by the proposals, so the fellows mm -hmm. themselves. And in community initiatives, we would like to take a step back and provide what is required for the, you know, uh, nurturing and the growing of a project, which we ourselves haven't initiated. So we, are, we okay. have room yeah. for that. Um, and that will develop, you know, depending again on who brings what to us. Uh, maybe at some point we might find merit in initiating a citizen science project, but we're open to that. Yeah. We're totally open to that. Yeah. Wonderful. I'm just going to slightly step into this conversation at the point to say <laughs> we have about <laughs> uh, to, to do to say that we do have about five minutes left. So I'm I've just dropped a message in for the audience as well that if you have questions for uh Jotsa and John, we please do add them in the QA box. Uh we do have a few minutes to take some questions and maybe till the audience adds in their questions i'll ask one question that sort of struck me very much right at the start uh Jutna spoke about the really important partnership between welcome and dbt that came together to form india alliance and Janvi, of course science gallery also is formed through a very interesting and unique partnership and uh and maybe if you both want to talk about the importance of uh these kind of partnerships not just in establishing these institutions but also the partnerships these institutions have formed to make sure that public engagement research is sort of constantly happening at the best possible way and reaching the best of uh, everyone uh, everywhere um so yeah you know once once this partnership uh, uh you know between dbt and the welcome trust was formed uh and I think the, the really important thing there was a, a very deep commitment to seeing it work. Uh, but that also depended on the success of uh, my predecessor's capabilities to actually bring together this wonderful uh, partnership and the sustained support of people uh, at, at many levels, right? Because within institutions, so, so you know, uh, we're, the India Alliance in some ways is the front, right? 
but mm -hmm. behind us stands uh, uh, you know two very large institutions that are continually committing every year uh, people and resources and effort and time to ensuring that we are supported and then when uh, you know the, the 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 work that is done within the alliance uh, also means that we count on the community and that community is not just in India, the community is international, it's global because our committees are global. And that means people, scientists, busy working scientists, taking their time to review proposals, you know, and uh, spending a lot of effort and energy uh, across time zones uh, to continue that engagement. And then it means the efforts of our fellows uh, who you know invest their time and effort in doing the research and ensuring that it gets reported correctly, that their that their work is published, that their published work uh, gets built upon, uh, etc. So you know it is a whole system of um, um, investment and engagement, and then the. The, the ultimate, you know, which is the actually communicating to the public what it is that we do and why it's important. Uh, for that, in many ways, uh, the fellows are the best, uh, you know, means of doing that because they are excited, they are passionate about their work, they're doing it uh, for a variety of reasons. And those reasons are what need to be communicated to the public, right? Mm. Janmi, would you like to add something or there's a question from the audience we could Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just very quickly say, I mean, like, uh, you know, Josna already mentioned, we have a bunch of, so, so we, have a, we, have a, we have a group of institutions that have come together for an institution like Science Gallery to form, right? Like in the first instance, of course, uh, locally, um, so to speak, the government of Karnataka, but also Indian Institute of Science, National Center for Biological Science, which is practically nurturing us on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and just the Institute of Design, uh, Art, Design and Technology. So, you know, so we, we also, in a sense, have come together in a partnership. We have the strength of their credibility, you know, in a way backing us, you know, so we don't have to establish ourselves from scratch. So that's, you know, that's a huge opportunity to have the opportunity to be taken seriously. And, you know, um, um, and then of course, the, the, we have the responsibility to live up to it, but we have a good, we have a head start in a way. Right, because of this. So, so there's that, and of course, go, going. I mean, as as we've done for practically every public engagement um, event that we've done, we've partnered with cultural institutions and research institutions, both in India and abroad. And I think that you know, maintaining that nature of connections across the globe is very, very important to keep um, keep the strength of the work we do here, but also to to give trust. Um, or, or to give the reason to trust to our, uh, you know, audiences and to our fellows that uh, we are up to something, you know, we are up to something good, we are up to something credible, um, and that they might actually take this seriously. So uh, partnerships are very, very important. I think it's, you know, credibility in many ways gets established by association within an ecosystem, right? And uh, uh, it's only over time that, you know, you can sort of, you can become more specific. I mean, to begin with you are you sort of a, in our case definitely um, an assembly of uh, various kinds of legitimacies and credibilities coming together thank you Janvi. thank you Jotsna. there is um there is like one sort of broader question so Mansi has asked uh, that she would love to know what you think about the role for community organizers in engagement and education spaces since you both agree that not everyone has to enter these efforts or spaces from a science first angle. So how do you navigate that impulse, especially when you're dealing with scientists or as community members? So I think the role of community organizers in uh, engagement and education spaces. Mm. So, uh, you know, I think that community organizers are extremely important, right? Yeah. Now, in, in the India Alliance's work where uh, public engagement is mostly done through institutions, uh, where we have fellows or where we have been invited to give uh, uh, talks to popularize the work of our fellows or to help in uh, um, uh, sort of 
assisting the ecosystem in various elements of its work, you know, whether that's in science journalism or in grantsmanship or research ethics or those kinds of things, those are in some ways more specialized areas which are very focused in the academic world. Now, but for community organizers, there are also public engagement programs where, for example, you know, uh, you know, one program in particular comes to mind where we, where we, uh, the this was a, a couple of years ago where the India Alliance uh, was participating in this superheroes and superbugs mm -hmm. uh, program, right? So, uh, where you have people who would like to know about issues of topical interest and make them more accessible to people who don't necessarily have a science background. So I think there is where uh, uh, you know community organizers have a very important role to play, um, and you know we talked about this earlier, where we talked about the fact that uh, there are many spaces where uh, um, there's not sufficient um, effort or or you know ability to be able to allow their students, uh, for example, in less privileged schools, where uh, a, a focus on this element of self-driven curiosity and wonder is not necessarily developed and i think that's where people community organizers have a major role to play and these could just be somebody who's just interested in seeing that kids have an opportunity they don't necessarily have to be a scientist or even anybody particularly interested in science if they're interested in the community that's what matters mm. yeah no, true. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that I that sort of, you know, understand the full question, but I, I'm going to follow Jyotsna's, Jyotsna's lead on answering this, uh, which is that, you know, uh, I think what we would like to do is to allow the, allow our audiences and our visitors and, you know, people who participate in our activities, masterclass, workshop, whatever, is to, is to develop a perspective on science, right? Like, so we're, we're, it's, we're not pedagogical. So, I mean, you know, so, and not entering these spaces from science first, you know, in a sense, yes, we don't do that. But I don't know in what public space one would even do that, right? Like, we don't have public spaces that even um, have that approach, right? I mean, and, and so um, in many ways, in fact, um, we're dealing with, with we're dealing today with a public debate, a public culture where you where one would not even want to bring that into uh, bring science into 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 a discussion, right? Um, especially when it comes to things like vaccine hesitancy, for example, that you know surprisingly has uh, reared its head in India, etc. So, so I, I'm I'm not entirely sure, but I think taking Jyotsna's lead, yes, community leaders are incredibly important. Uh, uh, you know, be be it to organize a group of people, be it to create a perspective on something that's important in a particular setting, etc. So, and and one would work um, uh, very closely. Uh, with with community, uh, I mean, we, we, as I said, our third bucket is community initiatives, which will come from groups of people that are not us, and you know, there, there are uh, the, where they where they bring their own concerns. So I think, um, in that sense, we are yeah, we are at least here on the same page. Thank you, Jotsna and Janvi. I am uh, actually going to draw the session to a close now because we are a bit over time as well and it's fairly late at night. Thank you so much. I'm sure after a long day, both of you were here to share your thoughts, um, the challenges of being in a space like this and you know what we should look forward to and what both these institutions are striving towards. Right. So I'm hoping that this would have inspired um, some people to engage with both these institutions and the work that they're doing. And thank you so much again for joining us and this really fun discussion uh, uh, between uh, both of you. I'd also like to just let everyone know, um, those who are in the program, that uh, the recording of the session as well as all of our other programs will be available on our YouTube channel. So do uh, watch them there if you missed it live. Uh, you can also sign up for some uh, interesting programs this weekend where we have a panel discussion tomorrow, uh, thinking in a dish, stem cell, stem cell research and the human brain, a panel discussion with Raghupadanya, Sridhar Venkatapuram and Sudhata Raman. Uh, we also have another program which is called Disease to Dish, uh, a closer look at the accelerator program 
for discovery in brain disorders using stem cells. This is led by researchers at NIMHANS and at NCBS. So uh, do join us for that program because that's going to take you through uh, both laboratories in NIMHANS and NCBS. Uh, I'd also like to remind the audience who is here to fill out the feedback form to tell us how you enjoyed the session and what more we could do in our programming going forward. Uh, thank you so much and uh, we will we look forward to seeing you in future programs.